Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Ali, for inviting me. I, it's a pleasure, of course, to be here. And it's an honor. And it was a pleasure listening to my neighbors, the Norwegian and the Danes. I feel really power in the room. <laughs> and it's fantastic that we go to Harvard to meet each other, to <laughs> get some know-how. <laughs> so, I'm going to read my presentation since I rewrote it completely yesterday. Stockholm is, and Stockholm and Scandinavia is located in the 59th latitude together with Alaska and Kamchatka. Thanks to the Gulf Stream, we have a nice summer climate, but a large part of the year is tough, cold and dark. And this has forced us to be particularly, particularly inventive. We put a lot of energy in new ideas and innovation, and in order to participate and comp compete globally. What's happening in Stockholm right now, in terms of growth, is a challenge both uh, is a challenge, but also one of the greatest opportunities in our lifetime. The population in Stockholm is increasing much more rapidly than expected. Fifteen years ago, we were discussing if Stockholm was finally fully built, complete. Sweden is, of course, following the global trend, and we are approaching 80% living in cities. The Swedish Planning Act requires all municipalities to provide an update comprehensive plan that serves as a guidance for legally binding and detailed plans, and also for building permits. Um, Swedish authorities have extensive authority over local land use. We also call it um, a planning monopoly. So we actually have the means in the municipality to decide what should be built and, and, and uh, how it should be built. Hence these rules. Uh, <laughs> um, Stockholm is built on 14 islands and surrounding mainland. And it's a link between Lake Mälar and, and uh, the Baltic Sea. Because its geographic location, Stockholm has four distinct seasons, perfect for swimming and skiing. Stockholm combines great ex expanses of water and greenery with a mixture of historic buildings and modernist architectural gems. Our economy is knowledge-based. Stockholm accounts for 55% of Sweden's population's growth and over a third of Sweden's GDP. 35% of Sweden's new enterprises are from Stockholm, such as Spotify and Minecraft. Outside the, outside the United States, Stockholm uh, are among the 10 strongest university environments in the world. Presently, we are a growth engine of Europe. The population is growing rapidly. 16,000 new inhabitants per year. That number is now increasing. These people coming to Stockholm are one-third newborn Stockholmers who need dwellings. One-third come from other places in Sweden and one-third come comes from other places in the world. We embrace this in Stockholm. An increasing population is a fundamental cornerstone of positive economic growth and increased welfare. The challenge is to provide the citizens with housing, schools, health care, and everything you need for everyday life. In addition, we today have a crisis in Europe, <clears throat> receiving 100 refugees per day, of which 50 are just kids under the age of 15. Sorry. Huh. Uh, the other great challenge of um, uh, the other great challenge is, of course, to develop Stockholm in a long-term sustainable way. According to every study and every international survey of Stockholm, we are a livable city of opportunity and an extremely environmentally friendly city. Many of our citizens are well-educated, early adopters when it comes to technology and solutions. 
They have high expectations on quality and life, clean air and water, and 24-7 access to all kinds of service. The two main obstacles for future growth in Stockholm are the lack of housing and the capacity shortage in the transport system. The city plan we have in Stockholm is called the walkable city, and it sets the standard for the whole city. Today, it's being updated with small but important adjustments addressing design and architecture as portals, tools, and even drivers of increasing health and he um, health accessibility and integration. The aim is to create an environmentally sustainable city being fossil fuel free in 2050. Architecture Stockholm, architecture in Stockholm, is the city's first architectural strategy, actually Sweden's first architectural strategy. It talks about innovation, innovative architecture as giving quality to the city, green architecture addressing climate and sustainability matters, art and temporary architecture uh, with a, uh, making the city into a test bed. Stockholm has four sustainable principles, the social, ecological, economical and democratic principle of sustainability. And this we work with in all our projects and we expect anyone who wants to build in Stockholm to go into these questions holistically as well. Stockholm has invested in district heating and cooling, and that dates more than 50 years back. So we have already connected 80% of all our buildings with, with um, the system of, uh, of um, district cooling and heating. It's like a big grid over Stockholm. So today we have a uh, oh. The CO2 per person that we use today is three tons. Our aim is 2020 to get down to 2.3. So in Stockholm we have this fantastic history. It was very recent that we moved into town, but we have actually had this growth situation in Stockholm three times already, expanding over our widths. Um, so, we all, uh, with that said, we have this fantastic history of planning. And uh, it all connects, I mean, the history that we work with also connects with the identity of the uh, city. And that's actually the material we have working with. And this is actually the view that I would recognize of Stockholm. Uh, both the one 1535 and the one 1864. Actually, taken from a balloon with a camera. Um, this is what Stockholm looks like today. Uh, city planning, we were, of course, inspired by Paris and all the uh, Beaux Arts um, knowledge that we could find, but then doing it the Swedish way, always transferring it to uh, the needs of our culture and in our city which is a very interesting mix, being situated on the outside, above, far, sort of far away from the central parts of Europe, always interpreting what others have done, taking best practice and moving it back. We still do that. But I can't swap. Hmm. No. So I just have to show you this. This is a... A uh, picture from our actually city planning committee archives. They are listed today as the UNESCO's, one of UNESCO's 300 memories of the world. And we actually have saved all our drawings uh, from 1713 till today in the municipal archives. So if you ever have a question what has been built in a in a plot in Stockholm, you will have the answer. Not only the castles and the, and the more expensive houses, but all houses. So it's, that's why it became this memory of, of the world, because it, it shows the whole span, which is very interesting. So we can't 
we can't um, uh, we have to work with our identity and our history it's not a question if it's a question how um, and as Eric showed this is a picture of Vällingby uh, our modernist city very sorted out with work living and um, uh, central areas very close to each other but very separated um, we're trying to mend that our friends the Danes say we're mending modernist mistakes but actually there are not only mistakes made in the modernist area we actually have a fantastic history of architecture that we have to take care of and fill in the gaps of functions that are lacking there and doing that with a public spaces uh, in focus is a very good way for us to work. This is also true for our million dwelling program where we 1970, no, 1965 to 1974 built over a million dwellings. Um, we sometimes say that they were terribly ugly and terribly terrible and that's not true at all actually. Uh, some of the best floor plans that we have in Sweden are from this period. And actually this moved, this was the last expansion when Stockholm moved from being a small town to a big, a big town actually making place. And the problem with these uh, um, suburbial areas are that they are also built as islands. So we're now trying to reconnect them to the city with building in and in between. So when we build new dwellings in Stockholm, we do it everywhere as mending the segregated system of where these buildings are. So here is Hammarby Sjöstad, our first environmental development area. Uh, it was a former industrial area nearby the city centre. Some Innovations were born here, but still I'd like to call Hammarby Sjöstad a first step. Um, it has shown us that growth can be achieved in an environmental manner. Ideas were born for this in 1990, and nearly com they are nearly completed now. We have uh, 25,000 people living here and we have about 11,000 housing units. And this is our symbol for, uh, for the future. And also, this is what we show lots of our visitors. But as I said, this is just the starting point. The Hammarby model was based on a closed ecosystem, an eco-cycle, uh, in which waste and energy consume, consumption was minima minimized. And, uh, the goal was to cut the environmental impact with 50%, and it actually succeeded in Hammarby Sjöstad. So we have a lot to learn, and we have a lot to reinterpret when we go to the, our next eco-profile project, which is uh, Stockholm Royal Seaport. It's actually also an industrial harbour area. It's very urban. It's going to be very urban and high density. Here we are planning for and building right now 12,000 new apartments and 35,000 working places. It's a very, it has very uh, near proximity to the city centre and also to the national park. So uh, to be able to build here we have to build green corridors protecting wild animal life and ecosystems whilst they work side by side with a ongoing industrial areas or, or um, projects. Climate smart living and innovative energy technology will be developed here. And this is a test bed for our new solutions. We have very high goals here with carbon dioxide emissions to be less than 1.5 ton per person already 2020. We plan to be fossil free uh, 2030 and the rest of the city um, 20 years later, which also is a very tough goal that we put up for ourselves. Renewable use, ecosystems, public transportation, how does all of this work? Well, we have three arenas. The first is binding conditions, except for the city. 
Yeah, we, we, when we work together with the companies, we have binding conditions. So if you want to go come in and build in, in the Royal Seaport, you have to um, adapt to these uh, conditions, where, which are very difficult, and it's quite expensive to build here as well. Uh, except for the city's planning monopoly, we actually own the land here. So in, in that sense, we can really say what goes and what doesn't go. The picture Eric showed from the Silverly building was uh, the winning prize of a, um, a plus house uh, competition that we have, which was a tendering uh, competition and had this lovely outcome. Uh, we had 16 entries and all of them uh, were brilliant, so I just wish to see all of them built. The second arena is the collaboration, which is the key to success between the city, the developers, and the business company, and also the research institutes. We have a strong partnership for new energy solutions, ITC solutions, smart grids. Uh, we we get, the city gets the new te technology and the companies, they get a test site and a showroom for their projects. So the third is the, we use, we, we also look forward to the innovations from smaller startup companies and new ideas. And this can't be done in the two first. Uh, so we have um, started an innovation center that formed, um, uh, yeah, we have started this innovation center and it serves as a showroom and a contact center for the public city and the stakeholders. And here we are really exchanging knowledge and, and experience and here I really would like my friends from Denmark and Norway and also Ali to help us. Um, in the future. We have learned the importance of early collaboration with culture and art in order to create a better city life. One of the city's old gas containers is turned into a theater. You can see it in the far end of the picture. And the other one to a market. And the one with the best idea gets to develop it. So it's not on price, but it's on quality and idea. The key is always collaboration. So the next example is Farsta. It was built, uh, this picture is from the, from the inauguration at 1960. This is also, yeah, this is uh, also an ABC city and it's very famous all over Europe and you can see uh, projects in France that look very similar. But the form of this piazza was taken, this shape was taken from the Dell'Erbe uh, Piazza in Venezia in Italy. So we all borrow from each other. Here we had parallel commissions in, in 2014. And the proposal I'll be showing is from Kobe, a Danish company. They were showing a strategic vision for Farsta with housing instead of parking public space, uh, with public space as a motor for, for change. So this is what it looks like today. Actually, we have four at home, so this is exactly what it looks like with these big parking lots. And this is the proposal from Kobe, changing the parking lots into dwellings and then using the public spaces in between as drivers. The cities, yeah, and this is, um, yeah, this is the night view of this. And this is actually being planned and built right as we speak. So this is not when it's happening, but it's, it's, it's an ongoing process. And I'll just show you some pictures of how this area will be, where we welcome back the nature and use the public space for livability, so we can all move out with our private and collective lives. And then we also have a mobile strategy, of course, and that's the key to achieving the goal of becoming fossil free. So public transport in Stockholm, we are 80% of Stockholmers who actually use public transport. Uh, we are promoting walking as our neighborly countries. 
and we have increased cycling to 10% all year around, which is a major change for Stockholm because we have only been a few architects bicycling before in <laughs> Stockholm. <laughs> We all recognized each other before, but we don't anymore. <laughs> but this, this is what we're trying to do. We have lots of these uh, fantastically planned car roads that we actually don't need anymore. They are overdimensioned and they, use, they, are as, they function as barriers in the landscape. And this is what we need. We need um, more housing, more dwellings, and we need a place where we can feel safe. Uh, and we are now quite sure that we can change our city into that. So, to be able to... I get all mixed up. I usually never write things down, but I did this time. Um, of course, we are building new metro stations. So, to, this is... The, the, the expansion of the city is not possible without the infrastructure growing. So we will have nine new metro stations and we will change our public transport. And this, when the municipality, like in Norway, Oslo, says, now we're bicycling, now we're walking, now we're not planning for the car, it takes a long time. So, so but now we're doing it. So we, we need good examples and we actually uh, have to follow them up in all our projects. But as Eric also mentioned, we have this great sustainability uh, issue, the social, social sustainability, and the planning is now changed into being it's that we are definitely planning a city for all. We're welcoming all people that are coming to Stockholm and we really have to take care of that. We have a lot of segregated areas uh, and we really have to use architecture and form to build, build back our society so it's um, reachable for everyone. I mean, everyone should be able to walk in their city, in our city, together. So we have had these problems in our suburbs, and that scares us a lot. And the only way we know how to cope with this is to start a conversation. So, uh, one of these areas called Rinkeby, uh, it says there, Vad gillar du? That's of course Swedish. It means, what do you like? So, to go there, not to figure everything out at the office, the municipal office in the center of Stockholm, but actually going to Rinkeby, asking, what do you want? So, we, we asked the young people in Rinkeby if they wanted these after school areas where they play pool or where they can stay. And they said, no, we don't want that. We have Shista, which is our um, uh, knowledge-based area, 10 minutes away, but there is a highway in between. So they said, why don't, we, uh, why don't you organize so we can walk there in 10 minutes? So that became a drive for changing these parts of uh, Rinkeby, uh, gathering a main street, working with the bottom floors, uh, opening up the cityscape, and now we see a change this has been a, a place where every apartment has been its own cell and beautifully uh, furnished and taken care of, but outside the front door it has been uh, some other place, nearly like traveling boxes in a way. Now this has changed, so the people living in Rinkeby actually know they're living in Rinkeby and they are investing there and they are living there. And this... Um, this planning project, which has a lot to do about collaboration, talking to people and form, has completely changed the ways uh, to live there. And uh, I'm really looking forward to visiting the Rinkeby school, which is now one of the best schools in Sweden. We are talking a lot about this in Stockholm, and we have launched the Commission for Social Sustainability. Uh, now we as other cities have the measurements that we actually can see that people living in one place uh, and, and comparing them to someone living somewhere else, um, what education they have, what kind of health situation they have, and how that's connected to income and accessibility to different things. 
And since we now have numbers on this, we have to do something about it. So now it's a topic that we have to deal with. We have been very um, sort of slow on that, but now we are talking about it, planning it, and looking forward to actually learning a lot. And that's the last topic I have for today, and that's the dialogue. Planning a city is not done from the municipal office. And it's not done only from the architect's office either. But that's actually, the architecture is actually the tool for doing this. And the dialogue between all these people and uh, connecting all these needs, that's, that's our mutual, uh, that's our, mu that's our, yeah, that's our job. Uh, and we have to do that not only with talking to people, because we have to have a dialogue. We do. We have to have a dialogue in the um, in the system, uh, in the by law. But we also have to find new ways to have these dialogues. So we have tried about nine different ways of doing this, or nine different concepts. And we have realized that there is no one way to take care of these dialogues. We have to engage in the project, we have to move out in the city, and we have to um, talk to each other. So welcome to Stockholm, welcome to talk about what you would want to see there, and I really hope to see you there very soon. Thank you.